giving the reason, be holy because I am holy. What kind of reason is that? You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, you should be holy because I, God, am holy. Why not you be you, me be me? I mean, that's also fair, right? So he's saying what we're learning from that is this points to be like me or be me, right? God says, be me. Unify with me. Um, so let's jump in right into uh, um, the uh, commentary here by the Slonimo. We're starting with the, it's Parsha Truma, and uh, for those of you out there who um, have the book, this is uh, Netivot Shalom. Oh, I'll show you the back of the book, <laughs> the front of the book, Netivot Shalom on, on uh, the book of Exodus, and we are reading from page Reish Gimel. Hasha'at Hashkina Tluya Bekdusha. The uh, the title of um, of this commentary is the um, it, the divine inspiration depends on holiness. Okay, and here we go. So um, the uh, in in the parsha we read Vasuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocham. So Hashem is um, is telling uh, Moses and telling the people of Israel. Uh, make me a uh, sanctuary, physical sanctuary, a building, and I will dwell uh, within them or amongst them. So here the Hebrew is ambiguous. Uh, build me a sanctuary. So they're out in the desert. They're, in, in, uh, uh, they're camping out, right? And, uh, and they're living in tents. You know, and the Torah actually describes the encampment. And uh, God says, build me a, a sanctuary, meaning an, a tent in the center of the encampment, and I will live amongst you or within, or within you. And uh, uh, the question is, does that mean that God is going to be, God's tent is going to be amongst you? Or is God going to be living within you, meaning inside each person? Yeah. I mean, the larger question is, yep. God is everywhere. At all times, so build me a build me a building, and I will dwell in it. That's the question right away. What do you mean? I'm everywhere. I, I'm not consigned to a particular. I'm limited to a particular physical place. And if you're going to tell me that for some reason God's presence can be found in a particular place more so than any other place, if you if you want to say that, then say, build me the building. And I will dwell in it. The problem is that the text, the biblical text, doesn't say that. It says, build me a building, and I will dwell in them. Okay. In them. Okay. So that's, the that's yeah. a, a problem. Grammatically, right. that's an issue. So in the Torah, whenever we, whenever we have a grammatical issue, we don't say, oh, that guy made a mistake, he didn't know grammar. We say, oh, there's something hidden here. There's a mystery here to be solved. So that's exactly. What we're going to Thank get. you for clarifying. So, so what's the mystery? And the rabbis uh, uh, resolve the mystery by saying this: It doesn't say. It um, uh, just, uh, just said. It doesn't say in it. It says in them. That, and they, they interpret that to mean that you build a tent and then I'm going to dwell inside the heart or inside the person of each, each person. In, in each one of them. And later it says, everything that I will show you, this is God showing Moses, um, Et tavnit mishkan, the uh, the pattern of the sanctuary, and tavnit kol kelav, and the pattern, the 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 design of uh, of each one of the utensils, the implements, such you're gonna you will you will do. So they're gonna follow a very particular plan that God is going to a, a design, a blueprint that God is gonna give to to Moses. 
בהקדם ביאר עניין המשכן, שאת רואה קדושה מעריכה כל כך בפרשיות המשכן, וכל ענייני המשכן חוזרים ונשנים בתורה כמה וכמה פעמים. And also, says the son, we need to, we need to also uh, clarify what's curious that the details, and in fact the Torah goes into great detail of every piece of pole and piece of wood and piece of cloth and, and, and implement and, and every little detail of the sanctuary is listed as, as a real architectural um, you know a, a protocol or, or, or blueprint <coughs> and repeated more than once in the Torah. So why? He says why is this this, this obsession, this, this, this emphasis on the building of the tabernacle? in the Torah. And he says, if from one, uh, like Rebelli said before, from one uh, uh, redundant letter in the Torah, we can learn so many laws and principles, so much more so that every word that's related to the tabernacle is instructing us on uh, different paths and methods for divine service or for spiritual work. But he says, but we don't know what each detail is actually teaching us. As human beings, we're limited. You know, our understanding is limited, so we can get a lot, but we can't get the whole picture. There still is a mystery, you know, to it. But, <clears throat> but he says, even if we can't know every detail of what everything in the Mishkan means, yet, we can learn there's a general message. And the message is that the purpose of divine service is for a person to be unified with the Holy One, Blessed Be. So regardless of the details, whatever the details are, the, the goal of following this spiritual template is to unify, to be immersed with the Holy One, Blessed Be. And here he's really just laying a, um, a foundation for um, <clears throat> for the commentary that, that's to come. But what he's asking us here is to take it on as an axiom, as a, as a foundational principle. That our goal is to take our separate self, for me to take my separate self, and to aspire to work to unify with the Holy One, to unify with the, with the oneness of all, right? To unify with God. So the physical tabernacle, but I will dwell within them, each and every one of us, if we take the lessons, which he's going to speak about, the lessons, the particular lessons of how to build the spiritual building within our, ourselves, that makes a home for God in this, in this yeah. lowest of physical worlds. I see, Everywhere. I see what you're saying. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to that. But this is an excellent question because um, often <clears throat> when we, you know, we present things as a dichotomy. You know, it's either this or that. Which one is true? This one or that one? But the truth the truth is, is most dichotomies are false dichotomies. It's like Rebelli said. You know, we want to fuse them together. How can they both be truths at the same time without contradicting one another? Mm -hmm. So it's not that we need to toss out the physical and only be in the inspirational, or we need to toss out the inspirational so we can be grounded and, you know, practical, but how can we create the blend? It's like mixing colors, right? Um, to honor the, the artist amongst us. You would have been a builder. You would have been on the team. <laughs> yes, probably, most probably. So, um, but actually his commentary, um, and for those of you folks who are uh, following in the book, we're going to uh, skip a bunch of paragraphs to page uh, Reish Dalet, uh on the second column, the par paragraph that starts, Ube Shmuel. So, um, 
And he, he's going to, Solomon is going to actually go into that and, um, and talk about, about that fusing. You know, let's see how he, um, he deals with it. So, so it's, you know, so in the book, it, it's brought. So the Solomon here is bringing a comment, uh, a comment from a different commentator. Um, on the same verse, make me a, a sanctuary and I will uh, um, uh, dwell amongst them. And he focuses on the word mikdash, sanctuary. What does it mean, sanctuary? You know, what is a sanctuary? It comes from the word sanctity, right? So what is, what is sanctuary? In essence, what does that mean? It means a place that is holy, right? Exactly. Is that, that's what you said, right? So, and he says, Mikdash, Milshon Hazmana, he says, the, the, the place, the sanctuary, is from, comes from the language of inviting, holiness. Mikdash comes from the word Kadosh. Kadosh is holy. But he says, don't look at it as holy, holy, literally, but look at it, it comes from the word to invite. Holy as an invitation. Kama Chazal, Ayan Kiddushin in the in the Talmud, the, the sages in the Talmud, they say, Shalashon Kiddushin Harei At Mekudeshetli. When we are, um, when a man is marrying a woman, he says to her in the uh, in the traditional um, uh, verbiage of the ritual, he says, Thus you are sanctified to me. That's the word that the, the words of the man says to the woman. What does that mean? It means you, my bride, you are sanctified, you are uh, special, and you are um, meant for me. So, you are called to me. You are specially ordered for me. There's a Yiddish word for that. Bashert. Right? You are my Bashert. So he says, if you think about holiness from the point of view of the wedding dynamic, you know, you are meant for me. Right? You're, you're invited towards me. You're called towards me. And here he says, when a person is ordering, is, is, um, is calling, calling a pure place in his or her body, to house the inspiration of the Shekhinah, of the indwelling presence of God. The Holy One says, and then I will, then I will dwell amongst you. In other words, if I'm, if I'm inviting someone into my home, I make sure that my home is cleaned, and every, and maybe I have a room prepared if they tired and want to sleep over. I have a meal prepared. Uh, if I'm if I'm careful and mindful of my guest, and I really care about serving my guests, I will make sure that my home will be properly ready for that guest. Mm -hmm. So what the Slanim is saying is that if we invite, we want to invite God into our lives. Basically, that's the idea of building the building, right? Build a building and I'll, and I'll live in it with you. In other words, make, make room, for, literally make room for me in your life. So what the Slanim is saying now is that if I'm inviting someone in, I should think of the holiness as inviting someone in. So then I have to make sure that my, my life aligns, aligns and, and will be comfortable, so to speak, for God to be, for God to be present in my, in my life. And how do we do that? So that's, uh, that's yeah. what yeah. I think he's going to discuss that, next. That is a million dollar question, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that, that is a blueprint. That is all the details of the Mishkan is how do I do that? But the, the, but the beauty of looking at holiness not as some aura, you know, or some um, blessed state, you know, blessed by the priest or blessed by the, you know, blessed from outside, 
but as an act of invitation, an act of bringing, bringing something special in, right? That's a whole different take on, on holiness. From amongst the different ways that a, a, a Jew can come closer to the Holy One, Blessed Be, and brings that him or her to uh, unification with the Holy One. Remember that he, ought, he set the stage from the beginning that unification is the goal, right? By the way, it's like Buddhists say that enlightenment, right, is the goal, right? So there's a certain goal. In, in, in the spiritual pursuit, there's a certain goal. Different traditions would define that goal in, in different ways. For us, and especially for the Hasidic masters, it was unification. Ichud was the unification, what was the, or the cleaving, you know, to come and to become one with the Holy One. So this is what we're looking at, the whole sanctuary, the whole, the whole work, you know, the whole thing, whether it's internal, you know, whether it's a metaphor for inside, or whether it's an actual building. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right? Both. Either we're going in an external lane or we're going in an internal lane. The goal is the same goal, right. which is the yichud, the, the, the unification with uh, with the Holy One. Who be kavinyan kedusha, asher neimar v'nishna b'Torah. So he says the thing that is the most affectatious for achieving that unification is holiness. It's kedusha. So you see, the Kedusha is a mean to an end. It's not the end in itself. The goal is not to be holy. But holiness is the mean, is the state, right? It's the environment that we're creating. It's the home we're creating. So ultimately we can come to that unification. Dvekut. By the way, just to be clear, the term here is Dvekut, or Dvekus. The Hasidim Sirah. Attachment. Attachment. Yeah. Like glue in Hebrew. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. For some reason, I don't like that. You know, I don't like that. Usually in, in uh, translations, the word uh, cleaving is used. Mm. Cleaving to Hashem. Some, somehow it doesn't. It's, because, it's the becoming one with. This. Yeah, I, I like the unification. The unification uh, speaks, speaks to me too. But glue, what does glue do? Right? Uh, what do they call it? Super glue? It unifies you with whatever. <laughs> Watch out, don't touch it. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what were we going to say? Well, it, the super glue is like force, being force as far as but unification. It's, it's not yeah. being force. It's much more gentle. It's more yes, of an intimacy yes, yes. instead of a. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good distinction, right? Right. Okay, so um, that's why I like to use the word unification. So, uh, but dveikut is the term, and um, and dveikut is is really the um, you know the goal of spiritual work according to uh, this uh, um, you know this point of view, this perspective. So, ukmoshe ukmoshe biyer inyadamo. He says. And he says, it's said in the Torah many times, be holy, be holy, be holy, be holy. It repeats itself a lot in the Torah, uh, in the context of the Mishkan, of the sanctuary, in the context of other, um, you know, other things. Now he's bringing a few examples of verses where it says so. Uh, for instance, uh, when it says, uh, "Be holy, because I am holy, Adonai your God." So, he, so he, he says the verses, "Be holy, because I am holy," and he asks the question, "Why does God? Why, why is God um, uh, giving the reason? Be holy, because I am holy. What kind of reason is that? You know, it's like, yeah, I mean." You should be holy because I, God, am holy. Why not you be you, me be me? I mean, that's also fair, right? So he's saying what we're learning from that is this points to be like me or be me, 
Right? God says, be me. Unify with me. He says, but why is it it say, be holy, and then you'll be holy like me? He says, there's a spiritual principle here. You start with effort, but you end with grace. You start with your own effort, and I thought that answers your question, Rene. You know, you start in the physical. You start by doing something. But you don't get there by doing something. You only start by doing something. He says actually, and, and it ends with, he doesn't say grace, I said grace, but he said, and it ends with a gift. You'll be gifted at the end. And this is what it means, make me a sanctuary. As of, uh, you are now sanctified to me, says the groom to the bride. And you are special and invited in to me. And a person needs to engage with all the spiritual practices, whether by abstinences or by, uh, whether passive or active. Um... And then, once you engage with these practices, then the divine presence will come and dwell within you. Right? That is the gift. The gift is when she comes in, she joins your home. Right? The Tachlit Shel Veshachanti Betocham, any Yudhi Yachol Lagia Batsmo, to the actual attainment, to the actual goal of, um, of that state and, and um, and my presence dwells within you, a person cannot attain reach by him or herself. A person needs to begin the process, which means create a sanctuary, and then the process is, I will dwell within you, in each one of you. Which is, which is a beautiful thing. I always love that image because remember that he's talking to, God is talking to Moses, Moses is talking to the people, it's 600,000 people. Sorry, it's more than 600,000 people, 600,000 households in the desert. And look what they're talking about. They're talking about you as a community build a sanctuary, build one tent, just one sanctuary. But I'm going to enter all, now, by the way, 600,000 households, multiply that. How many, how many people, how many individuals is that? Wow, that's a lot. Two million, whatever. Let's say you do the math, right? A two, and a half. A two and a half million. So you build one tent for me, I'm going to enter two million of you, says Hashem. Mm -hmm. The beauty of that, I don't know, it touches me. <laughs> it's like, all I have to do is one, one tent, but God has enough presence for everybody. He says, this is the, uh, the purpose of the sanctuary, but it's also the purpose of the Sabbath. By the way, why, why is he talking about the Sabbath here? Because it said, that this Shabbat, the Sabbath, is a sanctuary time. So if you create a, if you create a, a, a tent of holiness in space, the Shabbat is a, is a tent of holiness in time. It's a different dimension. But it's the same sanctuary. Right. And it's interesting yeah. because they were busy with this for 40 years. They were moving around. And every time they moved around, they had to take it apart. It was portable. Mm -hmm. It was a very complex situation, but it was portable. And they would take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together. And the one day a week when they were not allowed to take it apart or put it together was on Shabbos, on Sabbath, on, this, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so the question, of course, is if I can't do that, so how do I get the v'shachanti b'saycham? How, mm -hmm. how do I get the spiritual benefit on Shabbat? On Shabbat. So that's... Yeah, we it. get it even without, we don't even need the nimshal. We don't need the, yeah. uh, 
the you don't need the physicality on Shabbat. It's it's pure. Right. You could say it's a con contemplative time, and really there you just have to invite her. The Tachlit Kol Torah and Mitzvot, and the purpose of all the Torah and all the um, um, instructions of the Torah. She do bet small yet better mikdash. So again, let's put these all together. The purpose of the sanctuary, the purpose of Shabbat, and the purpose of the entire Torah and the, all the instructions of the Torah, all the mitzvot, is that a person, him or herself, will become a sanctuary. Bet small yet bet mikdash. Vasuni mikdash yasem bet small mikdash. So what does that mean when the Torah says, make a sanctuary for me? Make yourself a sanctuary. Says so the Vinyan Mikdash Milshon Kodesh. The word Mikdash, as you can hear it, is also the same letters, comes from the words Kodesh, holy. Sanctuary from sanctity, right? It's the same in the English. Moshkatavam Silati Sharim, about Shedakat Kedusha Himash Yudim Kadesh that the state of holiness comes from when a person sanctifies himself so much, him or herself so much, that his or her body that his or her body become like a temple and like an altar Certainly, when a person is eating, it's as if they're eating the sacrifice on the altar. And here, obviously, we're mixing paradigms. We don't sacrifice anymore in our tradition. Uh, in most traditions, actually, sacrifice has almost vanished from human practice, uh, some rare places that it's still... But, but think about it. You know, it used to be the common practice in antiquity. We don't do that anymore. You can say that the the world and, and humanity are evolving, right? But what he's saying here is you're, you evolve yourself to be in such a state of holiness that when you're eating, it's as if the food you're eating is like w once upon a time in, in, in antiquity when we would eat the, you know, the sacrifice from the holy altar in, in the temple. In all your business is now sanctified. This is the highest uh, level that a person can attain. It just so happens that it's a very auspicious day today. Uh, it happens to be the first day of a new Jewish month, the month of Adar. And um, this month is the happiest month of the Jewish year. As a matter of fact, the sages teach us that at the beginning of Adar, we increase in joy. Our joy increases. There are a few reasons for this. The obvious reason is that on the 14th day of this month is the happy holiday called Purim. That's right around the corner. Yeah. Two weeks to Purim. Wow. How mm -hmm. the years fly, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's another reason which ties in beautifully with what we just learned. Uh, the sages teach us that in the times of the temple, mm -hmm. on the first day of, of Adar, on this day, um, the Jewish government would send representatives around to all the synagogues and they, would get, and they would make an announcement to all the congregants and all the Jewish people all over Israel, they would make an announcement that their taxes were due. Now, it wasn't just any old tax. Everyone was required to give us a certain specific amount. And this was used for the upkeep of the sanctuary. It was a communal tax and a poll tax. And uh, so that was today. That was done today on the first day of Adar. So the reason why we increase in joy is because we're being reminded today of our service to give, of our, uh, to be charitable. And that's how we become holy, is by giving of ourselves, either monetarily or spiritually, sharing our, our gifts with others.
מי שנכנס, מי שנכנס עדיין, מרבי, מרבי, מרבי. בשמחה, היי היי, מי שנכנס, מי שנכנס לדת, מרדי, 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 בשמחה, היי היי, היי היי Happy Adar, happy Purim.